Hi, this is David Odell with Odell Complete Concrete. Today we're going to go over uh, what it takes to build a retaining wall. This retaining wall happens to be in the backyard. Now when I arrived at this job, this is what it looked like. Um, the homeowner had watched some of my previous videos and um, was going to uh, start this project. And then he got into it a little bit. And then uh, he realized I was a local. He gave me a call. I came in here and uh, buttoned it up in a few days. So this is how it starts. You get your layout. Figure out where you want your retaining wall. Previously in here there was a slump stone block wall retaining that had like about a 4 inch footing on it. It was just leaning over from what I understand. Those colors on the back wall are a, um, a sample of potential color. They're going to paint the block in the future. That's why you see that paint there. But uh, here we are. And what we're going to do uh, is we're going to make this footing a little deeper. He had the original retaining out and the foundation. And it was only probably four, six inches below grade. And then uh, what we found underneath this dirt was some really hard, hard rock. So this is some bedrock underneath. This is a hillside home. And it looks like there wasn't a lot of fill put into this particular backyard. It was more of a cut rather than a fill when they developed this particular lot. So that means you got big rocks. And you can see them right there. We had to use a jackhammer to get them out and kind of break them up. So we get a nice one foot deep by one foot footing. That's what we're going for. Even though it's only going to be retaining about 16, 18 inches of dirt, we're going to be going uh, one foot deep, one foot wide minimal. Then we're also going to run half inch rebar all the way around in the footing. We're just going to do one bar all the way around. As far as the vertical bars, we're going to use a half inch rebar as well. We're going to go every 32 or every every uh, 24 inches, every 24 inch vertical on those uh, half inch what we're looking at is a total of three blocks high the first block is going to be basically a half a half a block below top of the new top of concrete because we're also expanding the patio area so we got to make sure that we set the footing below where the top of slab is we want about three inches clear so that top of slab comes over the new footing and we got we still maintain good depth for the slab without having to chip on the footing to get the con new concrete to go over it. That's the worst case scenario. I run into those a lot when I don't do the uh, wall. Because when I do it, you have to consider all these factors. Well, I'm going to be doing the pattern. I don't want to get into chipping the footing. I want to make sure that footing's below grade for many reasons. If someone comes in or puts a lawn in or they want to put a planter, you don't want that footing you know, jetting out there in the way of doing anything. So keep them down. Dig a little extra dirt. Go the extra effort. Make it good. We've got a lot of turns in this plant. We had existing trees, fruit trees in here. Didn't want to disturb them. So we've uh, jogged around them in a few places here just to uh, maximize the yard space and salvage the trees that are in here already. Uh, fortunately, I don't have to get into any sprinkler systems on this one because the homeowner actually moved them all out of the way. As you can see there, he pushed them all back, put new lines in. So he saved, him quite, he saved himself quite a bit of money getting started on this project. So what we're going to do, we're going to hand mix this footing. And when we come back to pour uh, the patio that adjoins the new retaining wall, we'll go ahead and solid grout the 8 inch, 8, eight inch wide block. They're 8, 8, 16s is what we're using for retaining. That's standard uh, for any kind of retaining. You want to go 8, 8, another 8 inch wide block. You get a lot of concrete in there, so it's going to be a lot stronger. Now I was going to use the laser to develop to get my lines and grades, but uh, 
turned out uh, my batteries were dead in the receiver so I just had to do it the old-fashioned way and I just use a four-foot level um, on a string line and the way I did that is our reference point to start the footing was off the existing patio it's always there's always got to be a reference point somewhere and that's where you're gonna start in this case we picked the patio because that's our low point we want the footing about three to four inches below the top of that existing patio because we're going to be buttoned up against that with the new patio and then we're also what we've done because this yard slopes backwards towards the patio and especially in these hillside houses they're kind of crucial that they slope everything to the front yard so you don't want water drainage going off the back of your hill causing an erosion problem so this lawn's about six inches higher than the patio and the patio slopes towards the lawn which creates a problem for drainage actually but in any case rather than taking this whole yard down and stay maintaining the same level and slope as the uh, existing patio we're gonna step it up we're gonna come in about two feet off that exact existing flush and level with that then we're gonna step it up five inches to the new additional patio which means I could step the footing as well which is nice so I don't have to dig down as deep and I still get coverage with my slab over it so we got our string lines we just went started at three inches low put the uh, level on it and uh, when you when you run a string line and you want that wall straight you don't really necessarily measure off of the property line wall property line walls are not necessarily straight so the house normally is so everything I base on these walls off is the actual house so I pull a line all the way down the side of the house even if it's offset and then you measure over establish a straight line on your wall now it turns out this wall was on a skew a little bit it was about three inches off of straight with the house so what we have on one side is about a say a four foot planter and at the other end of this retaining wall the planter is about four feet three inches but the wall is straight of the house which is more crucial in this situation because when you're walking down that aisle way coming through the gate on the side of the house you're going to be looking straight up of that straight up that wall now if it matched retaining you're going to really obviously see that something is not straight with one another so we picked the house as our reference and there's your step down right there I was talking about and that'll also that's the step down in the block as well as the step down in the new additional patio now I'm, there's still every two feet which is every three cores of block that's 24 inches we're gonna solid grout it in some cases if this thing was above grade and there wasn't any dirt against the back of it you could get away with just grouting the cells where the steel occurs but we're just gonna solid grout it because this is a retaining wall so potential moisture could go through the block at any point and fill up those hollow cells and then you'd have a problem with it leaching through the front surface and that could cause damage to tile stucco paint or whatever you put on the front of this wall this particular wall the homeowner is going to put tile on the front of this one you can put ledger stone stucco paint like I said many different um, designs you can put on the front of this wall and it'll it this wall will stay there you know forever and it's not going to affect what you put on the face of it the crucial fact is that you have to make sure you're waterproof on the back side now if you want a really good waterproof you want to use um, the self-adhesive roll it's rubberized roll with the peel and stick and it has vinyl on one side and rubber on the other that you could just bond to the back side of this wall and it's guaranteed for life against water seeping into that block wall well, that's the stuff I would use in this situation because I want to make sure I don't have to dig that dirt out in the near future and re-waterproof it because if you were to say put some Henry's 207 or some tar or something like that on the back side of this you're probably looking at you know maybe me 15 
20 years max and your water going to come through and now it's going to um, disturb whatever you have on the face of it but if you put the peel and stick rubber with the vinyl coating that's forever that way you don't have to worry about replacing the fascia of the block or digging out behind the wall in the near future and rewaterproofing it and with that many trees in that area you definitely don't want to dig it out again in 15 years because you're going to be cutting through a lot of roots Also, we have a fire pit going up as well on this one. It's a little five foot by three foot. There's your step I was talking about, which is in line with the step in the wall. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. And in the top left or right side of this screen, you're going to see another one. So if you like this kind of video, you'll want to click on that and see the next because we may go into part two of this or maybe something real similar to this. So we'll go ahead and check it out and see where this baby goes. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.